All right, this is paper two, mathematical literacy, in 24, June, the 12th. All right, let's get straight to question number one. Pinda went to, Pinda went to the shop to buy grocery. She checked the odometer of her car before driving. Before driving, the reading on her odometer was 123,456 as indicated on the odometer. It's here. Okay, there we go. It says 1.1.1. Choose the letter of the choose the letter of the answer that will complete the following statement. The odometer is an instrument used to measure supposed to be B. Odometer is used to measure distance. Okay. Express the reading of odometer in words. So remember they told us it was. It's this one here. Same as that that you see on the screen. So in in words it's supposed to start with one hundred one hundred twenty Twenty-three thousand. Twenty-three thousand. Four hundred. Four hundred. Fifty. Six. That's supposed to be in watts. Okay, here we have find out both the following ingredients to prepare a hot ginger drink 25 grams of ginger powder, 12,5 acid, 1 kilogram of brown sugar, a bucket of sorry, a bucket with a capacity of 10,000 10, centimeters cubed. This drink serves for people simply meaning these, uh, these ingredients will only be made to make a uh, for 40 people okay we continue and we see the question that goes on they are telling us define the tap capacity the term capacity capacity we shall say is the amount uh in this for me we are doing a bucket oh uh -huh, this is the amount amount of substance amount amount of substance a bucket a bucket can a bucket can a bucket can a bucket can carry or oh, we say a bucket can hold a bucket can hold those are two okay express the ginger Express the ginger two. Okay, so ginger, how much is it? It's twenty-five. Two tetanic, which is twenty-five. So we divide through by the smallest, which gave us two is two, one. So whatever is this simply means for two grams of sugar, you have one gram of tetanic acid. How many teaspoons of tetanic acid are required to prepare the ginger drink? How many teaspoons? So we are coming here. Teaspoons is how it has um, five grams. Then when we need the tetanic, it needs of comma five. So we shall come here and say uh, one teaspoon. One teaspoon. And this spoon has five grams and we need we are looking at five grams of what titanic so how many teaspoons shall we need cross multiply five multiplies with the empty then it is multiplied with that because we are div we divide through by five divide through by five which will give you two comma and the five comma 
so it becomes 2,5 teaspoons but this is a teaspoon you can't have a half a teaspoon so simply meaning she will use the three teaspoons determine determine the amount of sugar that is required to prepare a ginger drink that can serve 400 people first and foremost find out how much sugar do you need now the sugar you need is one kg so one kg can serve 40 people what about how many kgs will serve 200 people so we find out how many so cross multiply we find out that we have 40 and the one times the 200 so we divide through by 40 divide through by 40 so the space became five don't forget these are kgs because the space was on the side of kgs Okay, question number 1.3. Panda lives in the Endeville. She visited her friend in Springs. She decided to use the national roads to travel to her friend's house. The map she used for traveling is shown here next year A. Send the map in the next year A and the information above answer the questions that follow. Which national roads must she use? from Endeville to Springs. Let's look at the next year. So she's moving from here. It's coming to this place here. So definitely when she's to move, she might use, because she's from here, she might use that Endeville come down here, come like that, through. So, take note of that, we have, um, we have the N17 here, and definitely this one here, this continues, it's a N12. N12. Then we also have N3. So here you can see, we have N3, N12, and N, N7. N, N17, sorry. N17. You can click on your blues. Name, name, three. What is the general direction from Endeville to Springs? From here to Springs. This is south, east. So here we shall write south. Name the type of the map, you can see it's a national map because it shows the, uh, the end routes. The national map. Or oh, someone else could talk of the city map, but city map, because it shows cities, eh? So it's a national map. Question number two. Priscilla was invited to a University of Pretoria for an interview. She used the map in an extra bit to get her destination to get to her destination. Study the map in an extra bit and answer the questions that follow. How many provinces are represented on two? Name sorry, how many provinces are represented on the map? Let's go there and we see. looking at provinces remember we have nine provinces in south africa but now we have we have Limpopo as one northwest two northern cape three we have Houten four then we have bloomfontein 
which is free state. The um, we are making it by so you have five provinces. Lesotho, Lesotho, Lesotho is not a province. Botswana is not a province. Outang it is. Uh, free state it is. Mm, Northern Cape it is. North it is. Which is sorry, which neighboring country is found on the west side of Limpopo? West side of Limpopo. I did by this is Limpopo and it's facing north. If this is north, this is east, south, and west. Which country is Botswana? We say it's what? Botswana. Identify the scale on the map. The scale on the map was this one here. What kind of scale is it? Someone can see it's called a bus scale. Someone else could have called it a linear. A linear scale. Give a set of directions that Pusilis should use to travel from Freiburg to Pretoria. Let's go and you see the person is traveling from Freiburg to Pretoria. Set of directions. So from Freiburg, what she's using? Use and set of direction. We are saying use and 14. Pass. Now you mentioned the towns you're going to pass. We have uh, Deliville, then we have Sanyo of Kolila, then you move to Pensop, and eventually you enjoy it. You enjoy it. But we are not going to do Hansberg, they are going to Pretoria. We're going to Pretoria. So, you say you continue after venture stroke, you turn left, you take left, and the destination will be at the end of the road. So you are want you to mention these towns here, yeah. the ones that you pass. Afterwards, you turn left into. Okay. Also claimed that the actual distance on, on that actual distance also also claimed that the actual distance that she will be covering when traveling from right back to Pretoria will be more than 450 kilometers. Verify her claim by using the map and the scale. Calculate the actual distance as the crow as the crow flies. Now this simply means you're going to measure the distance, the straight distance. Straight distance, what do I mean? You put a ruler, put a ruler in these two places. Put the ruler in these two this. What is it? Up to here. This is what we mean by a cross flies. So you measure it like straight. So when we measure this, we ended up having a hundred and two millimeters. A hundred and two millimeters.
after measuring the, then you come also measure this up to there here you got 25 millimeters so we are going to prove so the scale is 25 millimeters equivalent to 100 kilometers on top here the question we've just measured 102 to 102 what will it be that's the distance we are looking for so shall cross multiply end up having 25 both equals to 100 and 100 and this becomes uh, 10200 divided by 25. So you need to divide two. So here we are. We have 20. This goes with that. So the missing box will give us the answer as 102 times. So we end up having 40. So the question. The question says, uh, this, it claims that it will be more than so. The distance is not that much. So you get your minus 0.08. Yeah, moving the time. Sorry, the distance. We've ended up having 0.08 as distance. So we need to measure this. So we have a difference of. All right, uh, question number, question number 2.1.5, the distance is embodied. She says prepare will be more than 450. We've just seen it that we measure the distance there, 102 millimeters. And we came, we measure the scale. We got that. For 100 kilometers, you have 225 uh, millimeters. What about if you have 102 millimeters? How many kilometers would you have? This is what we did, and we ended up having four. So the distance is shorting. It's below. So to become invalid, it becomes invalid. All right. Uh, when we look at question number, let's look at question number 2.2. .2. So let's lift Pretoria at uh, 1330 hours. 1330 hours then we she had stops she had stops here she stopped twice for 10 minutes and again 15 minutes for refresh for refreshing re refreshing up all right now we need to know how much time did she spend on the or how much time did she spend here so if these are uh, twice she stopped twice once 10 minutes Again, 15. So these are the two times. In other words, she spent 25 what? Minutes. Here she was not driving. Okay. She arrived at very back at 17.45. So determine the average speed at which she was traveling in kilometers per hour. Round off your answer to the nearest whole number. Now, these will have, we shall have two answers and we shall mark them. Now, there's someone, because now here, remember, we are looking for speed. The first thing you analyze is that the formula given to you, it states time, or you need speed. This is when you have to remember this triangle here, D, S, T, V. Remember this triangle here. So we are looking for speed. So we know that speed will equal to distance over time so now ask yourself ask yourself do i have distance yes distance is given to me uh here answers will be two someone who used this one that is already given to them it's fine even the person who has used the one that you've just got in question number 2.1 we got the answer as one zero in this one here this one will also be right but i'll start with this one that i measured okay uh, there will be a difference because uh, we are using different rulers. Some 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 other people have a hundred in it. Uh, they have a hundred millimeters when they measure the scale. So, uh, sorry, if they measure the distance between the two towns, others have a hundred and one. 
others have a hundred and two it would differ so when i used uh 102 millimeters my ruler was giving me this that's why i ended up having this distance those ones who used 100 uh you have 400 kilometers i believe you have 400 kilometers okay we come in here we say the distance i'm using my distance here over time now i need to find out the time that they spent so how am i going to get the time for me to get the time i will need to say uh the time spent it has to be the time when the person arrived minus the time when they left pretoria and it has to be in hours so when i subtract this when i subtract this i end up having uh i end up having I have four hours, 15 minutes. I have four hours. Four hours, 15 minutes. But then I need to change this to hours. I need to change this to hours. So the minutes have to be divided by 60. And the answer became 4,25. These are hours. Now this is the time spent. Remember, this time, this time that we see here, it includes these 25 minutes that the person was uh, resting. So it won't, so we need to subtract the 25 minutes. We need to subtract the 25 minutes. So minus 25 over 60. Minus 25 over 60. Mm. Okay, so we have 4,25 minus. So we end with three hours, comma eight three three. Three comma eight three three hours. So this this is the time that she he spent driving. So this is the time that we shall use to determine speed. Why do we remove this? Because it, it was at at a stop they were resting. It he was not driving. This is resting time. Okay, so we come up and we say this this time here we say three comma eight three divide that. So the speed was a hundred and six fifty three kilometers per hour. Uh, the time for it, it has no option. This is how you are supposed to do it. Now, the person who used uh, the person who used four hundred and fifty, the one which is in the scenario there. You come up, you divide your 450, divide, you still get 170, you know. So there are two answers. Some people would never measure it. With those ones who continue with the foot, you get this much. All right. Give one, give one disadvantage of driving during the day. Disadvantage during the day is that there's a lot of traffic. We have a lot of lot of traffic. There's a lot of traffic during the day. Because people are, you know, they are they're on the road. Those ones who are going to work, those ones who are coming back, you know. That's why it's better to drive night because there are less cars on the road. Okay, question number three. Question number three, this looks at measurements. And here we go. Tammy has a bakery and he supplies his wedding. He supplies wedding and birthday cakes to local supermarkets. He was requested to bake a birthday cake with the following dimensions and specifications. The top tire should have a diameter of 20 centimeters, a height of 15. It will be covered with I think except the at the bottom, then the bottom tire, which is the bottom cake, it's supposed to have a radius of 12,5 centimeters, a height of 200 millimeters. It will be covered with icing except for the bottom of the cake and the top 
of the surface area at which or on which the top tire will not be resting. Take note of that. Take note of that. All right. Here we go. We have okay. The tire referred to the layers of the cake. Okay, the cake should be baked at 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, we come to this and we say study the in study the information given above and answer the questions that follow. Identify the shape of the top tire. Definitely, everyone can see this. This is a what? It's a cylinder shape. That's what we are identifying. This is a cylinder. Okay, convert the temperature required to bake the cake two degrees Fahrenheit. They've given the formula already there. All you had to do is to substitute. Remember, the degrees that we are changing are these ones here. We need to change them and we, it becomes, come here and substitute and we say 180 times nine out of five, close brackets, plus 32. Please put this in the calculator. Don't figure it. The degrees become so here we have the degrees as three hundred fifty six. Question number 3.1, because they're saying calculate the volume of the top tire, which is the top top layer. So what 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 do we need? We have to come here and see. We are looking for the volume. The volume of this the cylinder, the volume equals to pi r squared h. Ask yourself what do you have? Okay, volume will equal pi, it's always a constant number times this is the diameter. I'm interested in the radius, so it means 20 is divided by 2, the answer becomes 10. So you bring the 10 here as radius, but it has to be squared times 15. We are looking for the volume. 3,142 times 10 squared times 15. We end up having 4,713 centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed. That is it. Oh, don't forget the degrees here. Yeah? The degrees. The degrees are there. Right anyway, that's how we got the formula there. Eh? Please, such questions for max, don't leave out the units. Substitution, looking for radius, and the units are supposed to be supposed to get a mark. 3.1.4. Determine the surface area of the bottom tire that will be covered with icing. You must use the, the formula. Surface area equals to pi r squared plus 2 pi r. All right, let's go there. I would I would like to do it from here. All right, let's look at that. Uh, they are telling us to look at the surface area of the bottom tire, which is the bottom layer, that will be covered by icing. We go back to that and the formula says pi r squared plus i would like i would like to do it from here okay now surface area it simply means it will be this space here because this is space that's going to be covered by icing and also the sub part here so what we're going to do we shall use the formula they have given us which is pi r squared plus 2 pi r H. That's the formula given to us. Formula given to us. Now, when you use this formula here, simply meaning 
we are going to look for the surface area on of all the big cake together mm -hmm. but remember this there's a certain part that won't be covered which is covered by the bottom of this smaller cake we shall also need to subtract it off simply meaning we shall subtract the surface the area of this bottom of the smaller cake here. this one here it needs to come out why when you look at the scenario here they're telling us the bottom cake of the and okay they are saying it will be covered with icing except for the bottom of the cake which is below here down down there then except of the bottom of the cake and the top surface area on which the top tire will sit so where this cake is sitting we shall not consider that there, there would there would be icing anyway so first and foremost we shall find this as we find this, we have to analyze this. So what do we need in this scenario? We need the radius. And that we need the height. Ready, pi is already given. So radius, they told us it was 4,5. These are centimeters. The height is already seen here as 200 millimeters. So if we change it to centimeters. It becomes 200 divided by 10. You get 20 centimeters. Why am I changing it to centimeters? Because all other measurements are in centimeters, to be easy for us to, to be easy for us to continue. All right, let's go on. I find. Well, let me see. How do we go? How can we summarize this? It's fine. Uh, we shall say three comma one four two times the radius, which is this twelve comma five squared plus two pi times the r times the height which is 20 now which is 20 i'm trying to substitute into this formula that's given to us I'm trying to substitute into the formula the formula given to us surface mm, area equals to it never said it before the pi r squared plus two uh, please i'm doing this for you to learn that we substitute one by one so pi it's this much times radius my radius is there plus two times three comma one four two times the radius which is twelve comma five times the height which is which we go to radius twenty 20 centimeters this one here changed it to centimeters so we substitute you put this in a calculator put that in the calculator so this only we have 400 that comma nine three seven five plus this side here two times three comma one four two times 1, 12, times 20. All right. So we add that. We added, we added this. So this is the surface area to be covered. So if the top one is not there, but then we need to subtract the area of the sack of the top, the bottoms. So which will be area of the bottom, it will be pi r squared. Because it's a sack of pi r squared, which is 1 comma 2 times 10 squared. Why 10 squared? The radius. So we continue and we shall say so the answer became so the area of the icing is 1747 comma 74 centimeters squared comma seven four meters squared uh, 
after the icing after icing the cake tammy will put a ribbon around the top tire to decorate it and the ribbon will overlap by 2.2 centimeters determine the length of the ribbon in other words we are going to look for the circumference plus the wrapping the over uh, the overlap we shall add the overlap Shall add the overlap so now the circumference now definitely is because it's a small one which is the top tire that's that's what we are looking at remember the top tire has a radius of 10 a radius of 10 why because the diameter is divided by 2 the radius was sorry the diameter was 20 makes the radius become 10. so simple you come here and you say 2 times 3 comma 1 for 2 times 10 plus so you end up having it's 62 comma 84 plus 2 comma that much and you end up having 65 0.04 this centimeters in centimeters time started baking at 1940 1948 and the cake was ready at the time displayed on the clock alongside due to load shading express the time displayed on the clock as then the clock in 24 hour system. 24 hour system, we want it to be uh, the digital format. So if this is analog, what time is this? If this is 10, 10, 10 past 10 p.m. So in digital format, we add 12 and it became 22. 10. So your answer here is supposed to be. 20 to 10. You don't need to put the PM because this is 24 hour system. 24 hour system, you don't have that. Okay, determine the time taken oh, for the cake to be back. Express your answer in hours. So the time taken, remember? Time taken, same as duration. So we shall say if it ended at 20 to 10 minus 1948. So 20 to 10 minus 19, 48. We end up having 2 hours and 22 minutes. But they want this to be expressed in hours. So we already have 2 hours. So we take the 22, we divide by 60 because we want it to become hours. Yeah, we end up having. 22 when you divide this you have 0 comma 3 6 6 6 recurring so we shall make it 7 so when you add it on to this you get 22 comma to round off to decimal places yes it's 2 hours 2 comma 30 2 comma 37 hours at the time that was used all right Suggest an alternative source for power that can be used to beat load shading. We talk of solar, solar energy, solar energy. In her case of cooking, she can also use what? The gas. She can use gas for baking. Let's look at question number four. Mr. Kekana, the sports organizer at Cyprian High School, planned a marathon for his soccer players. He shared the map shown in the next year C. You shall see it. The map in the next year C. So it looks like in the next year C. With the participants. Participants may choose to run full marathon or half a marathon. The distance reflected on the map is in the miles and elevation above the sea level is in feet. 
Study the map in a next chapter A and answer the questions that follow. Give one advantage of completing a half marathon. One advantage, you give any advantage in line with this, someone will say, uh, one advantage you don't get, one does not get, uh, one does not, one does not get tired that much. And it saves time. Saves. It saves time. It saves time. This time is used. All right, describe the trend. I want to hear the trend. We are looking at the chain. Describe the, the trend of the graph from 14 miles to 26. Let's go and see. 14 miles are here. What is the trend? And 26 is there. Take note. It's, it, it sloped or it decreased. Or oh, there's a slope up 17. Then there's an, uh, an incline. So here, as you give the trend, you say the trend. Uh, there is there is a slope or a decrease from from fourteen miles to seventeen miles. And then you can say there is there is an increase from eighteen to twenty-three and a decrease or a slope from from twenty three twenty six. That's a trend that you're describing. All right. Determine the difference between the distance covered at the highest elevation and the and the, sorry and the end of half marathon in meters. We are looking at the difference. What, have, what what comes in your head? You need to subtract. What's the difference? You need to subtract between the distances covered at the highest elevation and the end of the marathon in meters. Remember, they're in miles and feet. So let's go to our next chart. We see this is the highest. So what was the distance there? It's eight. What is the lowest? It's what thirteen. Difference. We need to subtract. So if you subtract 18 minus, sorry, 13, 13 minus 8, you end up having what? 5. We have uh, 5 of what? Miles. We have 5 miles. You see how we got them from the Highest tip there, it's eight. And the lowest is what? 13. What's the difference? Five. Five, five, five. five two. So the five, five miles. So we need this in meters. So we shall come here and say, five, we are changing the five, meter, uh, five, five miles to meters. When you look at the uh, next, so when you look at the conversion table, there's no mile and meters, but there's mile and feet. Meaning, you're going to change from miles to feet, then from feet, you change to, because it's here, change to centimeters, then centimeters, you change to meters. That's the journey that you're going to take. This is the journey that you're going to take. You're saying, you saw the difference is five, ne? so five miles, we need them to become feet, we shall use this one here. Multiply by 5,280. What answer do you end up having? 6,400. These are feet. Now, from feet or from foot to centimeters, we have this much. So we also need to multiply this. We shall say 26,400 times 30, comma, 
uh, whereby we get you multiply by this much comma four eight and the answer became eighty eight hundred and four thousand six hundred seventy two these are centimeters the answer is wanted in meters what do we do we divide by a hundred and by a hundred indeed the covering is eight thousand and forty six comma seven two So the answer there is in it. Mr. Kekana took the soccer players to the local clinic for health screening before the marathon. So they're saying study the growth chart. Study the growth chart on the next chart D. Let's go to our next chart D. This is our next chart D. Answer and answer the questions that follow. How old is Diabolo, whose BMI is 19 and places him on 50th percentile? So we shall come here, BMI, 19. When does it touch the 50th percentile? 19 touches the 50th percentile at this moment. So what age is it? The age is going to be? 14. So in Jabulo, they are asking us how old is in Jabulo. We are saying it's 14, 14 years. 16 year old John with a weight of 67 kilograms and a height of 170 claims that his weight status is healthy. Verify claim his claims for showing, sorry. Verify his claim by showing all calculations. Now, first and foremost, when you're given a formula like this, remember, does it match? If it's, yes, this is, we're looking for BMI, okay. Weight has to be in kilograms. Check. The weight has, okay, we don't need to change. So it's 67 divided by, the height has to be in meters. Our height is in centimeters. What do we do? We change it to meters. We divide by 100. We get one comma seven. These have become meters. Now you qualify to put them here. Don't stop there. You need to be squared. You square everything. And the answer becomes 67 divided by one comma seven squared. We have the answers 23 comma. These are kilo kilograms per meter squared. Okay, but we don't stop here. This is the BMI that we've got. Now we shall go to the, because now the person is 16 years of age and the BMI we got 23. Let's ignore the points because the table we have doesn't cater for points. So 23, we shall come to 23 here. We draw a straight line. Draw a straight line. So we also come at the age 16. 16, you draw a straight line. Where do they meet? So where do they meet? So we take, the, it's in between, in between what? 75th percentile and 85th percentile. So we go back to our question here. We've seen the person belongs to 75th percentile to the 85th percentile. And when you come to the table here, it reads, it's healthy. So, Person is healthy and it's valid. The claim is valid because the sensor says it's a very fashion calculation, so the equation is what valid. Okay, we got question number part, sorry, part B. What advice do you think the nurse will give a soccer player with 
a BMI of 86. Let's go to the table there. A BMI of 86. 86 is about here and above. Now, 86 and above. 86 and above. Eighty six and above. Look at this. Eighty six is here. So it's at risk of overweight. Advice for people who are overweight: you say they should exercise, should eat healthy food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should find ways of cutting down the. They should find ways of cutting down on the fats. Okay. The following option of drinks and snacks way sorry will be served at the freshman station we have water which is wj juice energy e uh chocolate chocolate bar and a banana okay the diagram below now you don't need even to read through up here but you, if you guys you see the diagram so we have, we said whatever is here, it's the first leg, and this represents uh, the refreshments. Then this one here represents the snack. So it's C, D, C, D. What's missing here? It's C. So how do we get the outcome here? It's C, J, C. So we shall come here and say, complete the tree diagram, and hey, we've just done this. I is shall say the first primary element C and two it's just C. Determine the probability of choosing a refreshment with juice. So we are looking for J's only. J's, how many J's we have? Oh, one, two, J's, those are the J's. So we have two out of how many? Out of six, because here we have three, and also here we have three. So out of six, two over six, two divided by six. So the answer here becomes three. 